Hey, I'm Jack from Bombay Bicycle Club in my studio in Edgeway Road. We've just been record shopping and I'm going to do my best to try and make a track from scratch using some of these samples. Today I've kind of gone for more funk and soul because I'm going to make a, a kind of hip hop instrumental track, I think. Just as the quickest way to sort of showcase the method of sampling. But for Bombay Bicycle Club, it's, it's instrumental and it's usually, it's usually world music, I think. This is the first record I bought today. Jill Scott Heron and Brian Jackson. There's a song on here called The Bottle. And it's got, a, I think, about a 10 minute drum solo on it. It's a live album. And I thought I could get sort of the basis of the rhythm of my track from this. Then the next record I bought is Kiki Guyan, a record I'm actually familiar with. I heard a bit of it on CD, but I never heard the record. After getting that drum sample that I thought I'd have, I, this could be the, the bass line or something, or something over the top of the drums. I think they might be a similar tempo. So. And then finally I bought this <clears throat> collection I've never seen before of Pakistani folk and pop instrumentals, 1966 to 1976. There was a lot of sampling from the subcontinent on the new record and I thought this could be the future Bombay Basket Club single in here somewhere, so we'll find out I guess. Now samples for me are definitely the catalyst for writing music. So I use, I use samples as a source of inspiration rather than having a song ready made and wanting to put something on it. I think in the past I'd seek inspiration from the musicians I was playing with and sampling is almost like being in that room with the musicians on the record and being inspired by them. I think number one is Jay Diller for me. I actually have a record from Jay Diller's collection, which I bought off his mum. She's selling them to sort of raise money for the Jay Diller Foundation. And, um, you know, I've got a record that he may have sampled, you, don't, you know, you don't know. He was really one of a kind, I think. He had a, a way of making the, the beat sound very free and not to a grid, which I'm still working out, because whenever I, whenever I write a beat, I'm always chopping it up and making it straight and using the computer to do that. And when you listen to Jay Dillett, it has this kind of wonkiness to it. And that, it's very much something that maybe you can't learn, but I guess I'm trying.